being in a dark place in the Philippines, I'm going to talk about something that I'll build a picture because then it will make more sense. So you've just arrived in the Philippines. Um, you've been in the country maybe two, three hours. The, the taxi driver overcharged you, but you're in a good mood. You're still in holiday mode. You moved to a new country. It's all shiny and new and it's exciting. Your girlfriend seems okay. You, you, you meet up and she sort of in an apartment out and things like that. And you, you go, okay, I'm going to go to the shopping mall. I want, you know, and she, she, she wants to go with you, but you turn around and say, well, you know, I'll go on my own. I just want to, you know, see what the area is like, blah, blah, blah. I'll, I'll take her a, a ride up. And then you get robbed. You're robbed on the GP. Now, in your pearl of wisdom, you don't know your girlfriend that well. You haven't set up the banking yet. So you've got on you your entire month's budget, maybe even two months' budget. So you've lost all your money until your next check comes in or you've got access to a banking. So say you've lost $2,000. You get back and you're still in a bit of a shock. Um, you're suffering, you, the reason you went to the Philippines is you've been suffering with stress and it's recognized that you've got some issues that are bipolar, etc. Um, and you sort of shut down. You switch off. You, you don't want to admit that your budget's gone. You don't want to accept the fact that everything's just going wrong and you're you're doubting your girlfriend now because this has just happened to you, you just arrived, was she involved, was she setting you up? And that's how quickly something can decline in the Philippines. That even on the first day, something could go that badly wrong. Um, a tenant had a similar situation. He, he actually got robbed as soon as he got to, on his first jeepney ride. And he was like completely shut down. He was bipolar and he, did, he didn't tell me, as I found out later. But he was sat there on the sofa, curled up, completely shut down, drinking alcohol, smoking like a chimney, ignoring anybody that's trying to talk to him or asking what happened to him. And, and then he run off the following day. Um, Those sort of people are the people that end up jumping off the bridges. And I'll say as blunt as that. Because they don't want to admit they've got it wrong. And they've probably got family back home that are saying, what are you doing? Why, why are you going there? Or maybe they're not even supposed to be traveling. But it's like, as long as you're getting your medication and all this sort of... Yeah, as long as. But the what if on that scenario is not thought out. What if there is no access to medication? What if all the money is stolen? Who's going to take care of things? What if you completely shut down and have a mental breakdown? What if? See, the thing is with life in the Philippines, a lot of it's calculation. For the easiest life, you calculate everything. You're going to expect the builders to be unreliable. You're going to expect that you're going to have to do some work yourself. You've got to expect that you're going to spend some money in the initial months or even the first few years correcting things where you go, oh, lesson learned, move on. Um, but a lot of people haven't built the ability in them um, or have never had it or can never have it because of the environment they've lived in. I've always been fairly independent, so I've never really had a problem going anywhere on the planet. But for some people, they've never been out of their little town or something, and then they go to an entirely new country, new culture, new way of life, and some of their safety net mechanisms just don't exist. 
and it's why some of these people go they have some really bad things happen to them and i'm not trying to put people off the philippines i'm just saying if you're if you do suffer with some stuff sit and work out what how you're going to deal with certain scenarios what if how did this if i was robbed tomorrow what would i do to make sure that i had enough money to feed myself for the month what would i do if i got off the off the plane and my bag was stolen um, or they lost my luggage and said they'll get it back to me in the next week what would i do if i had no luggage with me because i'll tell you now my hand luggage has everything in it for me to survive even if i lost everything else um, and even in a plane crash for example if i managed to survive that one um, i would have enough stuff in my top pockets and my trousers to get me through the next two weeks three weeks whatever until i got myself back up and running that's how you got to think about it you got to put the reality is in here that some things can go wrong it doesn't mean they will and it doesn't mean get paranoid about it it's just that if something happened how would you rectify it how would you deal with it because many expats don't and that's the ones that normally end up on a slab somewhere <laughs>